a new electric vehicle by Mercedes is the Mercedes EQT, an electric van. This is their approach to the electric compact van segment. Subscribers know we have presented the concept to you. Now what is the final version? In this episode, all about the short wheelbase version, also the long wheelbase version. It will count for the electric version, but also for the combustion engine version, the T-Class, and also more, a special, a unique feature today with camping, both for electric and combustion engine version. And does electric camping actually work? And what has famous Mercedes tuner Brabus to do with this vehicle? We'll find out here with Thomas and Autofuel for you. Let's go here with the front of the EQT. Interesting is that it does not have a fully closed grille, a more closed grille than the combustion engine version, but not this, hey, I'm an electric vehicle look. It is a little bit more subtle, the integration. Here leads over to the headlamps, also LED. In this case, also the high performance LED and a nice integration of the daytime running light. The Mercedes philosophy here is indeed to say, we will not differentiate the EV to the combustion engine version, just very, very slightly. And I think that's probably um, a clever choice to do because people move away from the wish that they want to scream out, hey, I'm driving an electric vehicle. They just say the car is supposed to be beautiful and that's it. And look at the huge Mercedes logo here in the front. Let's try something. Hey Mercedes, open the front charging flap. That worked amazing. <laughs> and here, AC and DC charging. 10 to 80% state of charge in 38 minutes. That's not industry leading, I would say, but we'll soon tell you more about the range and the whole philosophy of the car. And yeah, by the way, I was just kidding here. Um, the voice input is for the interior, not for the exterior here. You just press this button. Here. <laughs> but it would, it would be cool, right, Mercedes engineers? Maybe you can try to integrate it. This here being the short wheel base version is in length four meters 50 or 177 inches. So indeed a compact van. And it counts the same for the combustion engine version, the T-Class, which we also have a separate video on, and here the EQT. And once again, from the exterior design, the only difference is the EQT receives this high gloss black cover here for the outside mirrors, and that's basically it. Same stylings also for the wheels. These here are yeah, quite beautiful 17-inch wheels. And you also get sliding doors for both sides, actually. Oh, the bed inside? Well, we'll see more about that later, because the interior will be very flexible indeed. And in the rear here, what they try to do is to create a beautiful design for a car that by construct or by concept can hardly have a beautiful design here with the vertical tail lamps here. But definitely this building form is always more form follows function. But by this way, you can at least integrate some design in such a vehicle here. The towing capacity, by the way, is very interesting. It's not too much, but it's the same for the EQT, the EV, and also for the ICE version, internal combustion engine, it's 1.5 tons. And this here is, for the first time visible, the long wheelbase version will count for the T-Class combustion engine and for the EQT, the electric model. This one here also with a special camper version. We'll soon also tell you more about that because this is here the Marco Polo version of the EQT. Very interesting. Here the long wheelbase version is at 4 meters 92 or 194 inches. And that means a little bit over 30 centimeters or about 12 inches, 12, 13 inches longer in wheelbase and some 10 centimeters or four inches more here in the overhang. Oh yeah, cat owners know. In the rear, short wheelbase and here the long wheelbase just look exactly the same. Interesting is technology wise, all come with a rigid rear axle, also counts for a normal T-Class, but when you have a commercial version T-Class or here the EQT with extra weight from the battery, you get a threshold strong, stronger rear axle. And I asked the Mercedes engineers if that would come with less comfort and they say, no, definitely not. We'll see in the driving part then at a later stage if that is really true or not. And you might have seen these wheels here, 19 inch. No, this is not by Brabus. <laughs> I will tell you later on what Brabus does for this vehicle. But it looks like, you know, really kick-ass wheels. Did I just say that? Um, but they won't probably yeah, won't be the, the serial wheels then later on, but why not, eh? I mean, or maybe like a 
performance electric version of this one? Could be something, right? Talking about performance and technology, what's really interesting, they are thinking at the moment if they make this as a Siri version, the shade for the interior with electro um, chromic function, so you have basically like in, you know, like an electric induction on the inside, it's really interesting. So then you have some more privacy on the inside, even the rear window here that is possible. And at this moment it's for this first early prototype and they think about if they rather go for the normal solution, like a normal manual shade, or if they do it like this. This would of course be yeah, a very, very cool solution. Under the hood, is there a frunk for the EQT? No, there's not, but hey, gas struts, that's cool, isn't it? Well, I mean, you could still put things inside, but then good luck <laughs> putting them out again. Once upon a time, Thomas wanted to tell you more about the electric features of the Mercedes EQT. Yeah, let's start with some figures. <laughs> Battery size here, 45 kilowatt hours. That's not too big, isn't it? So I'm not trusting the official range figures. I rather correct them downwards from the official driving cycles. And my maximum estimation for this is 250 kilometers or 150 miles. So that means no matter if you go camping or not, this is not something for long range or high range. And also the recharging possibility at about like 80 kilowatt hour peak DC. It's nothing for quick charging on a motorway. This is more a people carrier for inside the city or maybe you're going to a festival at the weekend, want to do some light camping in your proximity, or maybe if you are already living in some cool area and then go 100 kilometers or 60 miles to the beach. Lucky you when you can do that actually. So this one to me is electric people carrier and I would say a proximity camper. Let's take a deeper look into the interior and also then later on the special camping feature. To me, this is an ideal people mover for inside the city, maybe secondary vehicle, maybe especially for the kids, you know, soccer club and so on, you get the picture. And this is all about access. Literally here, rear and the front sliding doors and in the rear, for example, isofix child seats and it's so easy to access them to put a child seat in and out of that vehicle. This is then a normal EQT setup here. You have the same trim levels basically, and just the low trim is not available, which you would have for the T-Class. And also the front, look at that. Look at the front door, 90 degree opening. If you now think about um, if you have some disability, for example, you can you know go here with a wheelchair and then easier get in and, in and out of the vehicle. That would be another advantage, for example or even if you don't have disabilities, it's just an easier access indeed. Seats available in pure fabric, or this one, the sportier version with microfiber, they call it microcut now in the middle part, Artico leatherette on the outside, or full Artico trim is also available if you need to wipe the seats clean. So the seats all animal free, that's a very good step. And you can also see here this more you know, quality focused differentiation too the Renault system model, the Kangoo, because this one is built in the very same plant in northern France. This cooperation between Renault and Mercedes has been going on for a lot of years on a very high scale indeed. Then you also, in this case here, have the Mercedes steering wheel and also some other Mercedes features. And this generation I really like, I have to say, the all new Mercedes models on the passenger vehicle side, they have more capacitive buttons. And here you still have real buttons, for example, for the cruise control, just this um, touchpad. And on the right side, you also still have a real volume jock. And that's, I think, a very nice solution indeed. I said this is ideal for children in the rear here. Do you want to see why? Yes. <laughs> because this is a seat as I would be driving as a tall person, 189 or six foot two. Headroom wise, this is actually no problem. There's more than enough headroom for everyone here, even for Michael Jordan indeed. But legroom is really limited, even though this is in the backward position. The EQT gets exclusively this movable bench. However, because of the battery, this part here is higher, this part. So the bench itself is higher, but then again, they moved the back part of the bolster lower so that the seat belt 
can still be in the optimum angle for best protection, you know, in case of a hard braking or crash and so on. This was necessary then for that. So headroom wise does not differ then. However, the seating angle is less good, or you also say worse, for, <laughs> for optimum ergonomics. However, because of the increased height here, yeah, this is not, not ideal, I would say, but it can be worse. The crucial thing is here, the seats, the seat bench itself is actually quite decent and so on. And here on the passenger side, maybe I can also move the seat a little bit before, but you can see here the angle also of my legs. This is better in the combustion engine version because I sit a little bit more upright with the hip there. So in, as for this back part area here, it's really all about children being in the back here. That's also the main use case, I think. Interior overview, actually quite easy to control. We have nice air vents here with clicking sounds. That's nice. Screen, you can always see Apple CarPlay, zoom mode into that, a real shifting lever, and still manual climate dials. I also like that, really easy to control. Instruments, you can, by the way, also adjust the brightness, just left next to the steering wheel, it's really easy. Analog digital mix in the middle part, and for example, just for the digital speed. And yeah, the range estimate, I would say, it's quite realistic. Here, the infotainment system, Apple CarPlay and auto connection, it's the most important thing. Very reliable with cable. I have a Google Maps. Oh, I can also play a YouTube video here from the T-Class combustion engine. <laughs> Why not? But you also have this Mercedes menu right here that looks like the you know, previous generation of the MUX. But to me, it's more simple and straightforward indeed. You, of course, also have the car internal GPS, but yeah, everyone will use the Google Maps or Apple Maps. Here in the lower area, you can have inductive charging pad, but also then these two, two USB-C chargers, and this then the one for the connection. One thing though, when I pay at least 50,000 euros for an EQT, I want a Mercedes dampening of the glove box. If you want to see more of the actual load volume when everything is empty, check out our T-Class combustion engine review. Well, if you're also a gamer, then maybe you don't like campers. <laughs> These are, of course, different campers when you have eco shooters, but um, talking about the real camping thing in the vehicle, well, this here is the Marco Polo module. So this is for the normal EQT for the short wheelbase version. And then you can have this bed inside and it's actually fairly comfortable. I'll, sh I'll also show you why that is. If you think I'm feeling a little bit ridiculous right now, you're exactly right. <laughs> I'm just doing it all for you. <laughs> then here, look at that. This is the reason why it's actually fairly comfortable. You have these pads here underneath the mattress and that's the case then, you know, it also adapts a little bit to the body. And here in this camper module, you not only see the Mercedes branding, but also, and there it is finally, the Brabus branding. It's not Brabus, by the way, because Brabus is a German family name. There was, therefore, it's Brabus. Listen and repeat, Brabus. And they are not tuning this one with a V8 and 500 horsepower, but building this camping module. <laughs> Look at that here with the stove. And then here, next one with the fridge. Here we go. And the last one is then the sink. And then you just put this one here out. I have this for um, a similar system for the laundry at home, actually. This kind of, yeah, that way, and then you just uh, pour it away and hopefully just use biodegradable things. So, and interesting also that um, as for the table, it's actually quite light. And let me um, put this one in here. I can easily grab it. So here we go. There. So this one here is a, yeah, it's a lightweight table. And you can see here it has this mount and you can do two different things with that because you have underneath here, have this pole. <laughs> and then you can either put it right there and then, um, you know, attach another pole underneath or you can install it in the front of the vehicle. So you have both solutions. And when you go for that for the outside solution, then there we are. This is it. Then you can use this table here maybe also with some fitting shares and um, oh have some remote controls for the electrochromic windows for breakfast <laughs> let's now check out the bravos tuning for <laughs> i still can't connect bravos and interior camping equipment yeah it might take a while <laughs> so in the front very nice again with 90 degree opening for the doors but 
short wheel base, long wheel base in the front, it's the same. Once again, here the nice microfiber seats. That could be a nice Brabus tuning fit, right? Couldn't it? Yeah, but definitely looks good quality. But the real important thing is here now, opening the sliding door right here. Yeah, just do it one more time. So here we go, sliding door. And then this is then here the true Marco Polo version with kitchen inside, sink, a real one, and you also have then a split between used water and fresh water in here. Then you also have this small induction field here. Oh, this is a seriously heavy pan indeed. You might smack someone with that one too. Um, you have, yeah, not only some nice boxes here, some drinks, guys. Oh, they removed the, um, you know, the labels so it's not any advertising. <laughs> so here we go. This is then the small fridge. It's actually cold there, so it's even on at the moment. And you can always see this is one area to sit down here. Then there's this install table at this moment. It can all be removed. So depending on either if you go for the normal module or if you go for the whole true Marco Polo version, almost everything can be removed and you can use the car the same way as the normal version once again. And this is in the second bench. The question is, can I properly sit inside? Because when you look from here, it looks kind of close, but there is a reason that we have this roof extension. There we go. Then we do actually have some decent space. So we have a famous meme here that people mark the time code in the comments when I'm in the back seat, like when a second seating row, because like Thomas in the back seat, it always looks cramped when I'm really tall and I'm in tiny cars in the rear. Not sure what the time code meaning would now be. It's like Thomas in the camping area. I don't know. You think about it. And so I'll put the stove back in. I'm not sure what I should do with the pen right now. Maybe the pen will be served on the table. So um, Cornelius might want me to close the door so he has better light for the camera. So yeah, wow, that is astonishing spacious. So this roof tent here now serves the real purpose that I can sit here upright in a very comfortable way. This is in the seating setup and the dining setup. And this here, the top part here, would be a bed. The second bed is here basically underneath the table. And you can theoretically sleep with four adults in here because both beds are roundly about two meters in length and one meter in width. The top one, a little bit smaller. That's actually fairly comfortable sitting here. It's really cool. There will be a solar roof available and then you have basically independent power for USB charging and so on with a separate battery. The solar roof does not supply the vehicle battery. That's a key point. Yeah, this gets a little bit closer when I'm getting to the left side. And then here on this bench here, they say it's not the final vehicle yet if they change it a little bit because here it's get, getting a little bit narrow we you know with the back so you need to be smaller or I, I said earlier also um you know when there's late evening and maybe you're already you know stuck to the glass and more like this then then it fits better you know <laughs> then it also uh, fits in here with with the back and what i can also do here now is to put this one here forward and then i can use this button here at the side to move down the table. So it will sound a little bit weird now, like this, and that way it can be moved down. And this is basically the first preparation then to move this one here to the bed area. But yeah, um, of course, this would be then the Japanese dining setup, you know, or the dining setup for the, uh, for the kids, you know. So, so when, always when Japanese food is served is that way, and yeah, when German food is served, then maybe the higher position. Japanese food is definitely better than German food, by the way. So, <laughs> just to state it. Oh, rewarding. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, and that could be something, you know, for maybe longer video projections or something, to have this one here. So this is then now the transformed, true Marco Polo version. So I'm basically sleeping on the kitchen now and on the dining table with these um, cushions here. So, um, yeah, maybe another soft topper on that would be even more comfortable, but there is really enough space for that, considering it's not such a large vehicle indeed. So this would be the first of the two sleeping spots, and then there are even more up ahead. I'm hiding, you can't see me. 
well, now you can. <laughs> so you can, um, uh, like this, yeah. You can remove this one here, maybe um, on a hot and sunny day. And when you're, for example, lying in the upper bed here and then, you know, enjoying the view to the ocean or so. There's also, um, you know, another small piece that you can put here on the back part then that this, you know, area is fully closed. Here on the top part, you can have these adaptive cushions. So uh, in a way, this can be even more comfortable. It's just that here in the top part, it's not as wide as in the lower part. And of course, also not as high. Um, I'm not sure, depending on, um, I prefer to sleep with a head where it's you know, a little bit higher and then put my feet uh, back there, but maybe you do it the other way around, I don't know. Um, I think it's intended that you sleep with your head here, but just this way around, I mean, it works then when you close this area here. Um, but it's actually also, I mean, I'm not sure if, if there are two people on top here, because it's li just a little bit more narrow. Maybe two people that really like each other. This one here, by the way, would be then <laughs> the missing link. Um, yeah, so this and the, the top mattress, and of course, you know, this hard piece also comes underneath that. Of course, you better install that when you're already on the top part. If you're rather interested in the combustion engine version, the Mercedes T-Class, tune in here, or one of the big competitors is, of course, the VW Caddy.